Welcome. This is the April 2nd Jail and Zones production user call. We have Nick, Mohammed, Goran, Jan, and myself, Michael. And it looks like Jail C has supported from has landed from Jamie, and we thank him for that. Mm -hmm. He's been tied up for the season. And I just heard a noise. Was that someone wanting to jump in? Or a hooray? And Goran and Jan, you have some e-pair news. What you got? The <laughs> The how to say bird eye view perspective is to have jail utility automatically allocate e pair uh, for your jail. Currently, we have vnet dot interface equals well something e pair fifteen b or whatever, and. Uh, that uh, vnet dot interface equals. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, well, it allows you to do the uh, assignment of e pair to uh, jail, but it has to be a pre existing uh, e pair. The, if you ever used e pair with if config, you know, it can be uh, automated in a way that, okay, can you give me just the next number e pair? And I don't care which it is, but we can't use that currently with jail. And that's the uh, core of the problem that this patch attacks. I will in a minute. Cool. Uh, uh, so the idea is to create uh, an e pair in user. Well, you always create it in kernel space, but the uh, user space utility initializes the e pair creation. Uh, it's a uh, uh, well, you'll see once I get to the link that. Uh, cool. majority yeah. of that patch is actually creating an e pair. Uh, the, uh, actually it wasn't a function. It was, it started as a code, as a file, uh, in C that Jan sent me and he figured out how to use Netlink to create, uh, interface, uh, his example is uh, much broader than I need. It can use different cloners, not just uh, e pair. So I kind of ripped his idea and put it into the patch that I was working on before and using leap if config, which is, uh, as I hear, deprecated. So now Jan provided that crucial part uh, of uh, of uh, creating a new pair in a modern FreeBSD world. Uh, it has uh, currently it's very alpha, so it's gonna be very fragile and non-friendly patch. But the the core of it is done, and that's uh, creating an e pair and saving its name in the kernel space. One of the uh, silly situations for now is that if you don't have a configuration for a certain jail, or you make a typo, it will still uh, create an e pair and not store to jail because it's going to scream out at you. Uh, so there are not even corner cases, but uh, I would say normal day-to-day -day usages that you might encounter leaving dangling e pairs. So it's really, really not stable, but it's finally integrated and it's something to be worked on. So there are a uh, few questions that uh, actually it can be one question that Jan raised, and that is on a kernel side, what should we actually seek? 
should be uh, interface name, uh, pointer to a structure. Uh, I don't think we can save an index to the that's associated with the interface because I think that changes. But it's a valid question. What what do we uh, save on a kernel side? We know what was what the third one? And, an interface name, a uh, to a structure, and what? There is an index that is associated with every interface, okay. but it's a, uh, it's a low level side. I don't think if config can give you that, maybe with some verbosity, but I didn't play with that. Okay, cool. Uh, but cool. yeah, in the, under the hood, all interfaces has, uh, have indexes. So uh, the question is, what's the smart way of remembering an interface per jail? Second question that Jan raised is, what if we have multiple? And I'm going to argue that out of scope, uh, if you have multiple ethers, uh, because we know that interface Cannot be an array. Oh, and we already okay. have to have to use one. What? And we, it can be an array. How do you? How I do didn't you, understand what you were saying. How to represent oh, multiple e pair interfaces if vnet.interface can't be an array? If I understood you correctly. So vnet.interface yes. is already an array of white space separated lists. Oh. So v, nice. the vnet.interface can be multiple. So the jail.com format disagrees with the kernel here. I think with the jail.com format as it is, it splits on just normal white space. So space, top, new line inside the string, whereas the kernel allows you to have those symbols in interface names for some um, less than ideal um, reason. So uh, interface names can only be set, basically the only separator you have for interface names are null bytes. All other bytes can occur in interface names. So um, mm -hmm. because of that, you can't rely on, if you really want to make it a kernel API, it shouldn't be uh, limited to what jail.conf can express, but should support everything the kernel already supports. That because of that, uh, just having um, a single interface name is an arbitrary limitation I consider very problematic. For example, what if I have a jail which is supposed to be a router between two bridge interfaces? And yeah, cool. I want to I attach it to two jails. And so that already works with vnet.interfaces if you pre-create the um, interface. The annoyance for users wanting to automate this well is that um, as is the jail command, when you list interfaces with vnet.interface um, wants to have those exact names to move over to the jail. And so you have to have static names there. But there is no reason why you have to use it like that. For example, you can use the exec.created hook to uh, create one or more uh, ePair or other interfaces and then move them to the already created jail. And because the jail is already created, but the jail command hasn't started a command inside of it, uh, you can then use jxec, for example, to do things. And in FreeBSD 14, the common commands like ifconfig and route have a dash j flag to operate on the fresh j. So you can use ifconfig dash j, uh, dash j dollar name on the host to have the host's ifconfig command pass this argument attached to the jail and then do its work, uh, which is quite nice because then you don't have to have ifconfig at the jail. 
for example, so you can have a single executable jail and still set up the networking for it. Um, link for what? The code the dash to do J flag? No, to do the uh, creation of ePair interfaces dynamically. Uh, it would just be your shell script going into exec.created. So that's what we're discussing. That's the kind of breakthrough. That's what Boran removed no, some extracted no, no. one bit of code from you. No, uh, exec.created already exists and has for ages. Yes, but before that, the whole topic is this new thing Goran yeah, has what, extracted from your. If code. I understand his intention correctly, the goal is to make it vastly easier to. Uh, have just specify this is an auto ePair jail, and then the jail command will auto create the ePair interface for you. Probably also auto destroy it. Uh, at least that's why I assume he wants to track the name. I haven't looked at the cleanup code yet. And then the part I haven't found but looked for is the automatically. Uh, join the e pair to an existing bridge. Goran, did you uh, already get around to implementing that and I just overlooked it, or is that uh, still work in progress? It's a very much work in progress, but what because Michael just what uh, posted as a link uh, contains a user space and kernel space change to implement a singular VNet dot interface. Oh, but it's and what I planned. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't actually have much of an explanation, sorry, but uh, how about a diff? <laughs> what I, yeah, uh, you can well get the equivalent of a diff from GitHub. Okay. By having it display the difference between the FreeBSD head branch and the Commits oh, go yeah. once a uh, development branch is ahead, and then I think you get nine commits ahead. And if you click on that, you get I'm the clicking. commits sees ahead. And Opa. the interesting part would be uh, the support for vnet.interface equals auto. That's the yeah. commit he sent to me. Uh, cool. Thank you. That's That answers my question. My next thing is... obviously, sorry, I'm just a second. Yeah, let go around the uh, author is, speak. Uh, is to implement the uh, list of e pairs that you can save, obviously, because this is new to me. And uh, maybe if we pulled it from the store to vnet.interfaces, it would, well, be self-explanatory. Anyway, <clears throat> we have almost have a mechanism in place. So uh, I think after I have an array and clean it up a little bit, uh, because the function is very loud, uh, not lousy, sorry, uh, very noisy, uh, it's logging everything you do, no matter how verbose you want it to be. Uh, so that that needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and I have to think how to, in a case of an error, what to do. Uh, meaning that I have to inform programmatically what error has occurred to the caller. And on the other hand, that caller must know what to do about that because the error is actually uh, in the uh, net link. I mean, it's a net link generated error, so it has to know what to do with it. And uh, that's like a short term idea. I hope it's going to work uh, with. Uh, with the names currently. Uh, and when I say cleanup, there are very little parts of code that I haven't figured out how to import a proper header so that I can have the interface size. 
uh, the in in bite. Uh, I get into the inclusion house, so it's a, it's a bit nasty. On the other hand, I'm working on a, together with this. I'm working on a jail count that will use the this feature, so it's obvious what it's gonna look like and what you need to declare for it to work and how you can work around it. Because, for example, sometimes you need the host interface, the host end of ePair, and sometimes the jail one. So it's not in the jail account itself. It's a little bit of scripting through. So not as nice as it can be, but better than it used to be. Uh, would the cleanup take place in the jail.com? Uh, no, actually, the, the only change to the jail.com is that the uh, VNet interface uh, can have a value of O2. That's, that's all. Cool. Welcome, Dave. And let's look at some of these diffs. Oh, make e pair. So, Jan, this is uh, related or orthogonal? Very much related. It shows oh. what's uh, uh, possible using just the existing user space uh, shell interfaces. Uh, so a this is just a shell script. It doesn't require any changes to the kernel. Oh. Uh, this shell script I've written a few months ago creates uh, an ePair. Um, if you don't specify the unit number, it dynamically allocates the next available ePair. You get to rename either way, uh, either end of the ePair. If one end can't be renamed or nothing can be created, it cleans up. So it, if you fail because, for example, there is something which doesn't work, then yeah, it cleans up. And it also supports um, moving the interfaces to jails and uh, running if config either on the host or inside the jail context afterward so that you can put ip addresses on them if you want to use static ip addresses it also can put the interfaces in groups or join them to bridges the pattern here is that if there's an upper and a lower case a version basically the lowercase uh, version of a flag applies to the A side of the E pair and the uppercase version to the B side of the E pair. Okay, how do the two relate? You've got the gist and the make. -up. And the script makes it possible to have a trivial two line or one line exec dot prepare and exec dot uh, whatever uh, release or a post stop. Uh, then destroy the interface. Cool. So it sounds like Garan, you're still hacking on your code and Jan. The difference is, is that Garan wants to move this state uh, for a single e pair into the kernel so that the kernel can then be read out from user space so that you know which one interface uh, belongs to. This here works for an arbitrary number of interfaces if you invoke it multiple times, but doesn't store the uh, state in the kernel. The idea here is that you would embed the jail name in the interface name so that you don't have to uh, rely on the kernel to track the lifetime. And because uh, you would just, in this cleanup code, you would know that this interface exists or not. Uh, by probing for its intended name, like my j jail or whatever. Okay, are and there any questions for these two hackers? Because only one end of the e pair would move uh, into the jail, only that one would basically be stripped of its configuration or when the jail gets destroyed, so you can still use the other one to clean up because e pairs are internally connected. So if you destroy one end of the e pair, the other one is also destroyed. And yeah, that's how I would handle that instead of 
adding a special purpose uh, single use uh, name buffer into the kernel. The other question I would have is, if you want to destroy all of the VNet interfaces, couldn't you loop over all the VNet's member interfaces uh, in the kernel? Because there are callback helpers to help you loop over interfaces. And I think, think at least one of them uh, of the kernel functions in if var.h or something uh, should make it possible to loop either over all interfaces across all VNets or maybe even only over the current threads VNet. So you may would have to enter the jail VNet for the time being, then loop over its interfaces, collect those into a buffer uh, or process them directly, and then uh, leave it. While basically, yeah, maybe if there's a flag to destroy the interfaces when the VNet gets destroyed or something so that instead of moving the interfaces back, if there are cloned interfaces, you would destroy them. It would only move back non-cloned interfaces. Okay. That way the kernel wouldn't have to store any na new names, but would only have to have a single flag, which means destroy cloned interfaces on VNet destruction. Are you looking for help from everyone or you're just hacking away and we'll watch this space? Is that a question for me? Sorry. Both of you. You're the, do you, uh, uh, oh. Is there anything you need from the group at this time? Uh, I don't think so. I, oh. I know what I want to work on before I start asking questions because for now, it has stupid things. Like, I am not working with if that we net the, the ports uh, of, a, of a code so that I don't do we net stuff on a non we net enabled build and stuff like that. I know how to do that. I just wanted to get to the core of actually making it, uh, making an e-pair that kernel doesn't look at, but the user space knows what to do with. So now, it, of course, it can be done better, and I want to all these things that I know that can be better, I want to implement them first, because I know how to. I just like free time, as always. And uh, when I get to that, it will probably be a question for the community what to do next. Uh, before I poke Jamie about it, I want to at least be more clean, code-wise. Cool. Anything else on that topic? And welcome, Dave. Do you have any topics to throw on the docket? You are muted for what it's worth, but maybe you're just a fly on the wall. We like flies. Spring is here. So that said, while uh, while Dave comes up with topics, uh, you mentioned fastest package. Uh, what for those who have never heard of it? What is um, that? That's a little helper huh? to deal with a common annoyance that um, some. Uh, times the geolocation and uh, CDN logic of FreeBSD mirrors is far from optimal. So it uses DNS to resolve all mirrors for FreeBSD packages and then uh, tells you how fast they are. What's and the criteria for fast? Download speed. Uh, using fetch, using... Curl, using you... uh, whatever the Python script does. I don't... Okay. Busy bike downloads. Oh, the you see an example. Yep. Uh, that cool. tells you maybe you want to put something like this into your configuration. It does not modify the configuration. It only provides a suggestion. Uh, back here, what you could put into oh. uh, the override user local etc package wrapper repositories directory. 
so that uh, you override the URL, uh, but keep all the other settings, and then you would get to you enjoy the fastest mirror, which would be the one in Frankfurt in this example here. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes the routing is just terrible and you're down into the sub megabyte per second range and it takes ages to fetch big packages. Sometimes you even get <laughs> drop connections or whatever. And it's not that the mirrors are so slow, at least mostly it's that uh, the routing is just bad because it's not backed by a giant CDN uh, sometimes you have parts of the internet with very suboptimal routing, yep. according to that logic. Cool. And the downside is that the FreeBSD project does not guarantee the uh, availability of any specific mirror. So if that mirror is down for maintenance or whatever, it will break your package fetches until you change your configuration again. Right. Uh, which... That's cool. For a system you're running yourself uh, or for more or less manually isn't too bad, but for automation purposes, this would be a bit annoying. This tool could probably use some kind of output uh, the relevant UCL directly, and then you would just put a dot .include macro invocation into your um, default path and then everything would work out so that it just includes the URL. Um, or you would maybe use, make it even easier, use a dot .load macro, then you could just fetch it into a specific key uh, and just put the, the raw URL without any quoting in there. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Cool. Uh, I can see how that would be useful. Someone has some background in from, from noise. And Dave, you got anything for us? Uh, no, not this week, but maybe some stuff for next week. Yep. Cool. Is there any news on your nifty CI idea to never see Jenkins again? That was an inspiring uh, initiative. And Tag, tagline, yeah. That's right. Tagline and, and battle <laughs> killed. <laughs> Who killed the butler? Um, no, not yet. We we've got a bit of a general illness plague on in some areas of, of the of the project, and that's slowing things down. But Understood. Working on, it. yeah. Cool. Well, glad you can drop in. So, Jan, I'm looking for your block cloning niftiness, which may have been do 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 do. So, if anything, uh, too long didn't read. Jan did some. Uh, block cloning benchmarking and found that, wow, you can clone a complete jail root tree in like one second and rinse and repeat. And it looks like you created a nifty script to... So what this script here does do stuff. is import, uh, it manages a directory of deduplicated uh, direct, basically file trees, uh, which can be complete FreeBSD user lens or even complete base systems, including mm -hmm. the kernel. And then it uses content addressing similar to how a Git object directory works with two levels of indirection so that you don't end up with millions of files in a single directory. And it relies on the block cloning to deduplicate the file content. Uh, and then you basically it takes on my little lab machine about a minute to uh, hash uh, FreeBSD user land and deduplicate it on import, but then instantiating a deduplicated uh, user land from it is 1.1 seconds with a single CP-A. And the big advantage this has over the um, don't ever do that approach of using ZFS snapshot plus cloning is that this here can be rebased. So you can on updates just deduplicate with cp-a or install or cat, whatever, 
uh, the file content from the next FreeBSD version. So you, you can upgrade your deduplicated systems and keep the deduplication. Um, so that's nice, but um, this is only the importing in CPHA. It does not yet do the um, finding the intersection and di uh, symmetric differences between the sets of file contents. It wouldn't be hard then you, when you have them um, deduplicated like that, because you just have to basically run a bit of com and sort to find the files which are identical to the base version and changed in the new version, and then you uh, change those over. And if the jail is stopped while well, that, you don't need any locking. Would this have benefits with a package-based jail? Yes, uh, you can use package base to uh, get the uh, template installed and then get to instantiate them in uh, a second instead of a minute. Also, depending on your connection speed oh, and oh, if you use the local repository, maybe you can get down to 20 or 30 seconds. But yeah. So you so did... the, and the other advantage is that you're not uh, paying the storage cost for each uh, complete user land, which is after compression one and a half or so gigabytes. If you have a complete user land, and without compression, I think it's almost three and a half gigabytes in thirteen. Uh, so in fourteen. So uh, with the size of Clang and LLDB and similar tools. Um, it's just that free is the user lens doubled in size over a few years ago. And so um, it's nice to deduplicate that. And package base is a good way to reproducibly get the same files installed into your jails, but it still takes time and storage space to do that. True, but you could also lose Clang LLVM with package base by you can do all of that and then you can get down to uh, 110 or so megabytes after lz4 compression without losing anything you need in a jail so you only drop basically the debug symbols the compiler the linker and uh, a few big packages you don't need like the firmware for certain nicks which mm -hmm. you don't need in a jail yep. Yep, because yep. I don't need the firmware for my Connect X6 NIC in a jail. Yep. Or the management utility for it. And yeah, if you scroll back in the minutes, I have a, a first to filter the package list. But an even better way would be to just write a, a meta package manifest and then basically specify a package which would reference the packages you want to have. And then you would just do a package install my set of base packages. And it would depend on all the packages you want from package base. Have you seen good documentation on creating meta packages? Is the packages porters handbook good about that? No, not really, because it mostly focuses on please do everything for, for ports, which does not apply in this case for base packages. Interesting. Uh, I figured it out uh, last night. So yeah. Do you have your syntax handy in your command? History? I have a manifest file handy. Oh, could you uh, drop which... that in? Sure, please. Sure. Uh, after what, I need a minute to collect it. Yep. Cool. Uh, so that's exciting. And I guess I may have asked you last time. You did quite a bit of science on read-only clones of snapshots and some clever ZFS logic. Does this appear to be a simpler and more desirable approach now that block cloning is here? No, it's a bit different orthogonal approach. because okay. um, block cloning is about getting oh. effective thick jails as fast and cheap as possible. Whereas the other one is about uh, building true thin jails uh, and we're talking about then really kilobytes per jail. Okay, ah, okay. And because what we are, so per instantiated 
shell template because uh, and truly empharal it. So I the other approach basically uh, does the following: you um, get to use ZFS snapshots and clones because the clones are never allowed to diverge from the snapshots. They're only there so that you have unique mount points and cre ha can create empty directories to act as mount points. Okay. So there is no state uh, inside of the um, clones because they're never allowed to be writable while the jail is running. This means that you can just destroy and recreate them when they are out of sync, because there's nothing of value inside the snapshot. You just ZFS destroy your clones um, and clone the latest uh, tag you want to have. So a tag is just a snapshot for me. And then um, you can recreate it in milliseconds instead of seconds. So we're talking about a jail which can be, be instantiated with all of the shell scripting and RC scripts running in the jail in 300 milliseconds instead of minutes. Cool. Uh, by doing that, um, as a downside, it's that it, it does not feel like a, a completely um, normal jail because everything except for the intentionally created persistent mount point is read only except for slash etc and slash usl local etc which are temp fs's which are pre-populated get basically configured on every jail start and destroyed on every jail stop so they're unfair that's a very convenient way to completely automate everything because yeah. it's perfectly reproducible. It feeds close enough to a, a normal system that you don't have to customize much. You're only basically putting in technical enforcements of the policies which should already have been observed. Um, but it still means that you really have to observe those policies. Cool. So okay. Different goals instead of different solutions to the same problem. Any questions for Jan regarding any of that? So, um, Jan, you have a question for Jan. <laughs> no. So I recently brought up the fact that, hey, jail uptime gives the host uptime or more accurately, uh, uptime command inside a jail gives the host uptime, which can be optimal or can be completely misleading. Any thoughts since then on that? And I brought that up at the Dev Summit in Taipei and the feedback was good. I had a terrible name for it, which is uptime funk. Oh, that's a different presentation. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyway. Uh, I would love Jamie's thoughts when he returns. These I questions are totally... for people who are not present. Go ahead, Goran. I just Sorry. pasted a package manifest for Ooh. the complete FreeBSD 14.0 patch level 6. Uh, cool. Let me move this system. And I look forward to that. It's... Just one sec. Clicky, clicky, linky, linky. And copy you can create then you remove anything you don't want from the dependencies and then install this package so you would create it with okay suspense is killing me let's see boom okay Name, previous D, patch level. And you would uh, use it like this. Yes, please. And that would get you a file named uh, like this. I just pasted it. Yep, so I see it. then no you problem. have your package. And that's just a long, long list of all the packages. Oh, and you can just yeah. remove anything you don't want. 
uh, of course, I didn't type that out. I used uh, package query to uh, output that and then SED to write the rest of the line. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you simply have this package name. Is that a result of it or what? That's what yeah, exactly. Uh, the pa resulting package is a function of the uh, name specified in the manifest uh, and the version specified in the manifest. So. so this just is UCL format and you just ran this command? Yeah, it's exactly. Sweet. Because uh, FreeBSD package tools use UCL for manifests. Package create. And then for installation to a jail, I know we have package install package. dot slash path to the package, or you put it in a repository okay. of your own. Nice. And then uh, update the repository and you have a repository. Cool. Are there any remaining sharp edges? And then you could have cutting your fingers as you do this. Or is package based Not... looking like it's pretty complete? Because it, you know, it was that... years in the making. What's <laughs> annoying for me is that there are no basically blessed subsets of the system, which don't mean that, yeah, you're stripping down FreeBSD below the agreed upon minimum level for porters, port maintainers. So if anything breaks, it's on you. Uh, so if I, for example, rip out uh, what it could have about uh, local support by removing all the language files, then of course uh, anything non-English doesn't work and stuff like this. Well, I can see how your mileage may vary, but that's quite but cool. There are things you can just rip out, which you know, which really won't hurt you, and others where you have to... Uh, consider carefully, but for example, uh, you can rip out all the lib32 support uh, or uh, all the debug symbol packages. Which Jan, is... yes? would there be a nifty way to show the size of each of these through some clever query? Uh, yes. What would that look like? You, if we're talking uh, size, I look suspect into the e minutes, is a little smaller than Clang. Um, there is everything is smaller than Clang. Exactly. My point uh, exactly. You know, because it's like uh, 500 megabytes just for the debug symbols. Good Lord. Okay. Which, uh, yeah, it's ginormous um, compared to everything else. So you can then decide that you don't need a kernel in the jail, probably, and so on. And then you have saved most of it. And I already uh, shared a bunch of uh, shell scripts to do that uh, in this very call. Just scroll back in the minutes. To do the query? With rec access oh. to uh, select the right set of packages or oh. basically deselect oh, the yeah. patterns of like anything ending in the debug suffix or the get rid of this and that. Yeah, this, well, so it's just an extended uh, POSIX regex to get rid of the parts I considered yep. not required in a production jail. Um, yeah, I've been trying to do that since like 2004. So thank you. Better late than never. Yeah, the tooling is fi finally there in 14. Damn. I am and... patient, believe it or not. <laughs> God. So, uh, if you... Block loading benchmarks, package yeah, the, Here we that, go. Boom. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yes. So okay. if you uh, go down a bit more or more. So the... Here's the rack axe from... No, it's not even that bad for a regex. So uh, basically, so uh, bad boy. deselect so this, and you could use the oh, resulting yeah. package list. Uh, you uh, be careful with that line; it automatically installs those packages. Ah, it's the create the jail from scratch uh, invocation. Uh, 
at least it includes a jail path to my jail as if but, but basically the everything up to x arcs uh, uh if you just keep that it outputs the list of packages oh love it okay and that you can then use and ask for the flat size yeah using package uh query or maybe r query i don't know if it's in the short manifest the fields you need or if you have to have the packages installed because only then do you have the full manifest available for query and so the remote query does not have access to all fields because it only has the part which is part of a repository index and you it's already big enough you don't want to have a list of all files in all 30 something thousand packages uh, yeah replicated to every user land very cool so, um and then you could just pipe it through uh, sort dash uh, h or something if you format it in human readable to get a hu human readable list of name in humanized package size after uh, decompression. Yep, love it. Love and it. you should get something along the lines of, I think with G on a um, on a LZ4 compressed. CFS file system with four megabyte record size, you should get down to uh, 110 megabyte after compression with a compression factor of two point something without losing anything but the parts uh, removed through the grab dash VE. So that removes that's pretty good. The, that removes the debug packages, lib32, the development packages, uh, the kernel, the bootloader, BSNMP I removed because it has a dependency on the tests, which are an other 70 megabytes. Ah. Then I remove, uh, for some reason, BSNMP has a dependency declared on the previous tests package. Um, and I don't miss BSNMP, so I just removed it instead of looking deeper into it. Uh, the okay, Clang is the biggest one. Then yep. CHGB tools is for the Connect X five and six, I think. MLX is for another type of NIC. Yep. Dtrace you don't get to enjoy in a FreeBSD jail without breaking the security completely. Uh, LLD is the uh, Clang linker, not the one-time linker, that one you need, and it's luckily a lot smaller. Uh, LLDB is the LLVM debugger. Um, I have never seen it used for the rescue uh, commands inside a jail, because uh, if the jail is broken, I use the host to fix it. Not via, It doesn't have to uh, have a safety net of its own, and then I remove the tests. This would make a so, great wiki page describing crafting smaller jails with tools uh -huh. like this. Yeah. And then, and another thing you can do to vastly accelerate the time of installing that into a new jail and to avoid having to validate those against certificates, you have to copy ahead of time into the uh, empty directory. Yeah, we figured uh, that is out. To, um, Basically, prefetch those and then declare a repository which is your local mirror, so that you would package fetch that, build a repository of that, and then reference that local repository. Yep. The advantage is that you don't go over the network, don't wait for DNS, slow mirrors, and so on, and you don't have to do the validation every time if the uh, files have been modified in transit, if they never went anywhere except the local system. Then you should get install times between, uh, let's say, uh, 10 or 15 seconds or so, depending on how fast your system is. Cool. It would probably be a lot faster if you decompressed the packages. Uh, because they are XZ compressed uh, or ZSTD compressed. I think they're still uh, ZMA compressed. So yeah, which brings us to this week's uh, hour show. Yes, indeed. It's not even Halloween and it's already scarier than most horror movies. But it was April 1st. But I'm um, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, so show of hands, has anyone not heard of the XZ news this week? And dares to admit it. And yeah, just yeah, good. So uh, I suppose the BSDs were largely not impacted, so we're not going to be losing any sleep here and now. So that was that. Well, he also has some commits to Lib Archive. Oh, okay. And have we identified who or what this person is? Or is it just a a bunch of operatives in a trench coat or something you know, you know, piled up? Yeah. I get into a movie theater. My hypothesis, but I can't prove it, is that there are at least two teams. One did the um, sock puppet uh, operation and played a two or three year long long con and then another one weaponized that access but they pre-planned which project to exploit and the best idea why they pulled the trigger despite the not quite perfect exploit which is how I found out is that um System D uh, has an open and active issue to remove the uh, unconditional dependencies on the compression libraries, including uh, libzma 5 and only loading them on demand with DL open, which means that none of the common network facing demons, which do not use the compression using functions from uh, libsystemd, but mostly only care about SD notify, maybe the logging stuff. None of that uses compression. So uh, those wouldn't DL, uh, open the infected library, so they would not be exportable. So mm -hmm. they probably tried to get the, the, the return of investment before um, basically the window of opportunity closed. And that's why they tried the not yet perfected payload, uh, which still got really close to complete success. We were basically saved by one Postgres uh, maintainer having an unusual test cluster yep. he used to run performance regression tests. And he had suddenly saw a bit of noise when he tried to basically silence everything else so that he had Damn. less noise in his plots. And then he found out this by accident. He yeah. wasn't saved by anything but dumb luck. So do we know what was clearly targeted or it's just a broad... Is the did the, and you mentioned the, the back door getting used? Was it used successfully, to our knowledge? We don't know if it was successfully used, but we know that it was successfully deployed. Okay. And it would have been deployed to anything. Basically, it would have triggered on on any Fedora in a few weeks. It would have been in on any, any modern Red Hat system, anything Debian based. So huh. it would have basically owned the whole Linux ecosystem completely, as in they would have been in the distribution, uh, version control servers, package building clusters, the hypervisors of the uh, uh, hyperscalers, and so on. It would have been truly a complete take over the platform. Oh, so they caught it just in time. Go ahead. Welcome, Daniel. Yeah, how, this, how could this ever get past review? I don't understand. Uh, very simply, it got through uh, review because the original maintainer of XZ, this Lasse, I forgot his last name, was burned out and there was a malicious um, attacker who was paid to be there and always be helpful for two or three years to close in little issues, to write tests and regression tests, to fix typos and so on. And, and then had other, probably colleagues of his, uh, basically praise him and push the maintainer 
to hand over the repository commit bits because there is someone working on the backlog of open issues and to close this stuff and so on. And then he said, yeah, sure, fine, take it. That's my assumption of from what I've seen so far. And so basically they found that, are you familiar with the XKCD about this little uh, project holding everything together? Yeah, yeah. They found I know exactly what you're going for. And yeah. send basically their uh, social engineering and team, which didn't do anything very fancy. This isn't the next Mitnick, it's just a well-funded patient attacker spending the time to basically dedicate a, a part-time job at eventually taking over such a project. And then they had that project. They uh, had someone probably else develop the exploit for it. Uh, and they only put the exploit in the release tables and hit it in uh, the auto fuck and auto break scripts. Uh, sorry, uh, auto make and auto conf so on and um, configure scripts so that it was hidden between line noise like shell scripts, which Damn. already did nasty stuff uh, as they commonly do. When these basically when used the decompressor, which is part of libxe, to extract uh, the payload from the um, example test case compressed archives, which are some, and some of them are supposedly even intentionally damaged and uh, broken archives so that you have files which are rejected by the library as should be as positive and negative testing as one should, but those negative archives aren't derived from nothing up my sleeve numbers, but from something someone claimed to have randomly generated, which was then uh, with an org script, which implemented RC4 in a slightly strange way, uh, decrypted and embedded into the exploit code. So they hit the uh, exploit code in the, um, in the test blobs yeah. for the, in the regression test. Yeah, which, yeah, <laughs> so it was a long call. Then, uh, this code on an infected system which matches the desired characteristics. Basically, when FSH sees a, certif uh, a client certificate, uh, then that tries uh, if this certificate is signed with the attacker's private key, and if so, it gets executed in the uh, SSH process as root outside any sandbox. Thanks to a system D hook, was it? Uh, the yeah, the, the nastiness is so Debian based systems have started to patch um, OpenSSHD so that it uses the SD notify function to notify system D that the SSH server is ready. And the problem with that is that the, that function is implemented in libsystemd which is how you're supposed to uh, talk to systemd by calling functions from that library. But that library also is able to uh, decompress and compress, uh, for example, rotated log files. So it in turn depends on the libLZMA5 uh, library, which is the infected library. That means that the runtime linker pulls in a uh, the infected shared library into the SSH server. And so yep. any and then it on, when the infected code gets run, it's an IFUNC, which is a specialization which is normally used, for example, to pick the fastest version of a function when, for example, if you have a video codec or an image decompressor and you want to have it pick the fastest variant of that function for your CPU, depending on the SIMD extension uh, available in your hardware, but still have a single binary. That's what this mechanism is intended for, this IFUNC. 
and they instead used it to pick uh, the attack code. So yeah, basically they, it was a constructor which runs before main, which does the patching if it detects that it's inside of OpenSSHD on such and such a system. And then the SSH server is um, not just remote command execution for the system's users, but also remote code execution as root for the attacker, as long as they can establish a TCP connection to it. So it's truly a game over, you've lost the area. And it was pretty much caught by dumb luck. And it was caught by it dumb luck. How far pushed out was this in releases uh, and such? Or... It was available in package repositories. Okay. Ah. So yeah, they had that chance. They uh, had a few weeks, uh, maybe even. Goodness. Well, Daniel, you arrived to that description of the XZ attack, and we just had some lovely discussion of package base and Goran and Jan are looking at ePair automation. So maybe ePairs are up your alley, not to mention smaller. And we've kind of consolidated logic to exclude things from package based jails. And that could be queried to show the list of like a size of all of them, then make your choices and make a mm -hmm. nice artisanal jail. <sighs> and you can use that to basically list the dependencies for your own bespoke uh, meta package. Uh, so that you only have to install a single package which has a dependency on all the ones you want. And you could even go a step further and have a conflict with the ones you don't want so that it uninstalls them forcefully. But that would get in the way when you later want to, uh, for debugging purposes, maybe install the rest. Um, so yeah. So yeah, nice. that is exciting and a long time coming. Yeah, I do. Are is for people on the call? Are they, you know, are we going to use the public? Are there? I guess they're public repos for it. Or are we going to, um, or or use our, uh, you know, our Pudra servers to to distribute it, or mirror? I guess we could just mirror the uh, package base on our repos on our local repos package base isn't too big so you can really just package right. fetch uh, it all and then run your own package uh, repo command on it to get your own signed local but if it's a purely local one or local and ssh and you trust your ssh despite what we've just been talking about <laughs> um you can get away without having to sign it which has the advantage that you don't have to have the a uh, public key to validate the signature in the root directory you're installing to so that it, the problem is if you want to validate against the public key that has to be inside the root directory, which is a problem because uh, you want to start from an empty root directory. So you can just basically MKD the parent directory for that with MKD uh, dear dash P and then install the single file to, and then it works. But um, that tripped um, Michael up when he tried to uh, retrace my steps two weeks or so ago. And this, and this works for upgrades as well, right? I mean, why wouldn't yes, it? Yes, you can do it for yeah. uh, the package base side tells you how to do a, do a FreeBSD uh, system upgrade even for between releases. So in the future, 14 dot something to 15 dot zero would be possible with package base. Um, security uh, and bug fix updates are just the package upgrade. So there's no special steps required there. So Jan, this yeah. is what we needed, right? Add the package yes. keys there. That creates the uh, parent directory, and then you copied it over with cp av. Yeah. That copies over the uh, trusted public keys from the FreeBSD project, which are used to uh, sign the package base and other package repositories. 
on the official project servers. And it's annoying to copy over, but if you do a packet fetch dash G yeah. or something, uh, or uh, X something something filter pipe X arx package fetch, and then assemble a repository with uh, your own uh, little uh, make file or whatever you want to use for it. Um, you get to just um, ignore this problem and keep your own local mirror effectively. That is completely uh, my idea and not documented anywhere, but yeah. I would love to see a wiki page on artisanal package-based jails. If anyone's really bored, that would be very helpful. I've been waiting 20 years on that. <laughs> anyway, Daniel, mm. do you have any, do you come to the table with any questions or topics? I know I'm really late, but uh, no I was going <clears> to, <throat> I was going to ask about the, um, uh, the IPv6 thing I mentioned last week where, uh, where it, it works on boot in a jail. And then uh, if I if I do NetIF restart, it doesn't work. I believe Jan said that that was because of a timing, um, because either of a timing or an up-down issue, if the, if, uh, that, that, it doesn't, that it doesn't pick up the Slack address. I could, I could show you what I'm, what I'm doing if that would, if that if would help. If you have but a I'd reproducer, like to... let's look at that at the end. Yeah, I could I could show that off right right this second. I think uh, I have the windows open. Okay, then let me just make a cute little font here and I would just like to move uh, what amounts to tech support to the end of the call. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. So that said, any topics? Uh, and thank you for the XKCD link. Any other topics, or shall we dive right into that? We've covered a lot of ground. It was good stuff, so I'm not worried about where we're standing. Goran, anything else? Our delightful fly, Mohammed flies, plural Mohammed and Dave. Hello, Dave, again. Let her rip, Daniel. All right, all right, here we go. So I'm going to do left side, the the firewall, right. and right sure side. We see you on your screen. Yeah, yeah, here it comes. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not too tiny, okay. good. Did you All intentionally right. share your full screen? Yeah, I, because I got to get the, the, I want two consoles here. So uh, anyway, Just you now know the name of before one we of see my servers. We shouldn't because I you think, have I your think... uh, calendar in the background and stuff like that. I think we're, I think we're good. Uh, okay. If you guys want to hang out with me and my friends on Friday, you can, I'd love you can to show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, oops. Okay. Here we go. So there is my interface. And then I don't know what the hell this is. And then that is the, the addresses that I'm announcing. Um, so here's a jail. And, you know, I got my Slack address. So there we go. So there's my top secret Slack address for this. This is just my repo server. Um, and all works well. And then, uh, you know, let's say something goes horribly wrong. Uh, so if I do, now I do get errors. So we'll see some of those. So here's what I get. I get invalid argument. And then sometimes I get the address. Yeah, I got the address, but I didn't get the route. What's Can up with that? Can you please run the following command inside the jail I'm about to send you? Yeah. Where's the little chat okay. bubble? Biz biz, is that it? That's for the fly. No, yeah, give me a second. Did I have to? What's the interface over here? Uh, PKG, PKG underscore VTS. And Daniel, drop in that error you received. You have, it flew by pretty quickly. Maybe copy. Oh it yeah, in sure. The chat. I'll document it. The doc. 
Uh, yes, that one. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I have no idea if that's well involved. Um, maybe. it's probably Thank significant. Yep. Okay. It's what we've got to work on. Received RA. Don't think that's my router. It's your router's link local address if it is. Okay, you didn't uh, get a route. Okay, so next question. Uh, this is inside the trail, right? It's, is IPv6 forwarding enabled? In the jail? I don't think so. Can you check? Um, how do I see that without CTL, this? Uh, just ctl-a pipe forwarding, a pipe grab forwarding. Right, but is that going to work in, whoops. Dash a No, it is not. Okay. So it is a IPv6 host, so it should. Next question, did you enable the accept uh, router advertisement flag on the interface? Yes. Can you check if it's activated right now? Oh. Oops. Hypo? Uh, yes, it is. See. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, this is true in, on all my hosts, and I've got 13, 13. I've got 13, 2, 13, Previous 3, 14. version are you running here? This is 14. Okay. Um, and then the, the server, I, I mean, the firewall, I don't know if this is different. Um, Do you have any? Oops. Uh, thirteen two. Oh, geez, needs a reboot. <clears throat> well, that. maybe that's a problem. Wait, be Wait, the userland is 13.2? What? what? What does FreeBSD version dash KRU show inside the jail? Well, we're not going to see anything dash from you, but... space dash... Okay, no kind of none. Okay. 14. So yeah, it's 14. 14 both. So you didn't accidentally keep an old user land or something. Yeah, so the host the host of this jail is, of course, 14 as well. So let me check what I have here. So yeah, that's what I see on on all my jails, and I think I even was able to reproduce it on a on a host. But I, I was trying to Can go you... for the absolute minimal setup because I want to know what each, you know, what what each thing does. So it's literally just RT ABV, and then. Um... Can you try this command? I'm not perfectly uh, certain that the flags are acceptable for the demons I ran, but that basically RT sol. If D like that, so does it run? Uh, it seems to have. Should, if I remember the flex correctly, it should stay in the foreground with us. That's why I... Oh. Huh. Uh, I, uh, can I do... Or was it no, small that's... F... Um, um, small F to stay in foreground, uppercase F configures the kernel to uh, accept the not advertisements. Okay, yeah. Both Fs, maybe. So, yeah. Let it run for a while. Yeah. Uh, I, do I need to uh, do I need to adjust this time this timer or anything on my uh, firewall? No, that's, uh, I'm a bit confused how much you have in there because the Adre isn't document. It, uh, in resolve uh, and the RTR uh, uh, what advertisement daemon dot con file. I'll admit that I might have just pasted that from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you um, shouldn't have to put that in because yeah, that's it what should I was be thinking. enough. So basically, it should be able to derive that uh, just the DNS uh, RDNSS is required, uh, but that's missing. So maybe. You should, well, I do have DHCP on the in the jails as well. Well, I mean, some of them, some Wait, of them are static. You have DHCP v six? No, no, four. Just, just yeah, four. Okay, so I figured it didn't matter. 
if you're fine with only running your DNS resolver over IPv4, not. Uh, but if you want to support IPv6 only or want to, your DNS to be dual stack, then it does matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, now oh, we do They restarted this sucker. Mm -hmm. For the dual stack, I found that DHCPC didn't work much better. Then, yeah, then, um, then using using this, I was hoping that it would be just a super easy setup that would be kind of kind of universal um, for lots of different sites. So, so reducing the overhead by a couple lines of code sounded attractive. But if if that's if if that's more reliable, then I'll do that. Though, though I mean, it does work every time I restart. So, the... um, can you try something along those lines if in the or whatever the interface is on the route advertisement server? Basically, put in a the two DNS settings and nothing else, and you have to fill in your domain and your IPv6 resolver address. Is this if you have uh, those? RTSOLD dot? Uh, no, uh, this is uh, on the route advertisement server. Oh. Uh, basically, get rid of the extra stuff. Uh, save maybe the old file if you maybe did need it for something, but I'm just wondering if there's something confusing in your route advertisement config. Why would, because... why would the jail? What, what is this? Doesn't make any sense. That can't go on the router advertisement. What can't go there? What's packaged up BTS? That's the, that's yeah, that's the, the jail uh, so, interface. No, that's the wrong interface name. Sorry. That's the interface oh. name, uh, the first one. OK. Uh, so do, just can I uh, uh, comment that? Do you or have the know? window in the background? Oh, sorry. So. Uh, Okay, so what's uh really you should be able to get rid of the effectively I don't need... all the the address stuff is that none of that should be required, I think. If you really well, want are to different... use just stateless auto configuration. All of that it right. should be able to derive from the uh, interface uh, address if it's static there. Yeah. And then we start with what address. Well, I do have multiple. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They're all in the same uh, network. The, but I do have multiple. Rise, only the prefix matters. It would get confusing when you have multiple prefixes with a right. global unicast scope. It is smart enough not to trust. Oh, Garan has some recommendation. Yeah. Why would exactly for now? I wouldn't mess around with extra uh, router advertisement flags like managed and other. So what's I FC00 mean? Uh, that's uh, just, uh, in my case, that's just a ULA address so that uh, I have a dynamic IPv6 prefix with DHCP v6 prefix delegation and so on. So that's just so that I have a stable uh, IPv6 DNS resolver IP address on my network. Uh, you would put in something uh, different there, whatever works for you, maybe even a link local address. If the resolver is on the link, well, I'll just let it. Ah. So do. now it has we definitely received stuff put in um, the resolver. We are resolve conf. That's you good. Kill the demon. It, it, me... it shouldn't. It shouldn't undo that. So you can just control C it to get back to your shell. So did and it try now, to add a route? Yeah, try, uh, just. Uh, yeah, that is. Wait, no, that's 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 not it. May have been that some of your router advertisement settings were confusing, and well, got it. But it, it doesn't up work some because route. it overwrote the DNS with something meaningless. Oh, well. I think. Cut, cut your resolve con file. It put in the yeah. Yeah right. Um... Um, you can rip that out. Or whatever, if you have a stable uh, 
DNS resolver put that its address in. And if you don't want uh, any search domain, you can get rid of that. Oh, and your uh, and Mac OS uh, mm, stabbed you in the back by using the pretty kind of double ticks. Oh, did it? Thanks. Yes, it did. They look different from the ones above. Good catch. That's, this, that's why it was, uh, I was confused why it was quoted in ResolveConf. And. All right, that looks more accurate. Now is it getting the right? Yay. All right. Okay, so I was just configured. I just uh, needed to specify the. the we don't know just... because so... it's, a, it's not a 100% reliable issue. So wait wait a while longer before you celebrate. <laughs> well, it did It did work for the first time without Maybe restarting the jail. Maybe now we start the jail or something and try again. And the other thing I would do uh, inside the jail before you, or after you restart it. Oh, matter, sorry. <laughs> put in the, uh, there's the uh, run the router solidification daemon inside the jail with the flags A and M. A for uh, pick the interface is automatic and M for pretend I'm a mobile system so that it shortens the timers. Uh, no, it's not a double L. So, uh, okay. and I wouldn't do it like that, just service artisoldi enable. Oh, sure. Uh, if you want to use all the niceties. No, that's no, RCMP. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Artisoldi. That's disabled. <laughs> and now the okay. uh, Artisoldi underscore flex. Just check what it's already there. It should they default to dash A or something? In uh, no, just check yeah. it once. Yep. And uh, what's so, so it's AI. So what should it be? Just uh, add the M flag. AI M. Yeah, you can use plus equal syntax for that. Space then dash space dash M. Yep, that should. The first uh, character after the plus equals is the separator. It defaults to a space part. All right. Now, okay, great. So now if I update the DNS servers or add another DNS server in here, then, then it's gonna update all of my, well, all of my properly configured jails. Whenever it receives the next water advertisement. Great. Within a minute right. or so. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever found this minimal setup. I've definitely seen configurations with three thousand lines that may or may not work, but I I really love minimal setups because then then I can build off of those. The demon yeah, uh, already uh, basically detects the first uh, global prefix uh, on the interface. Right. So unless you want to specify which subset of your prefixes uh, you want to uh, announce, you don't have to specify uh, the address. Fantastic. All right, this is uh, great. So now I've got reliable, I've got reliable addresses. Let's hope so. I can, I can the IPv6 thing, uh, which my can whole fleet. be a problem in uh, jail networks if the um, Duplicate address detection that because jails can be so fast uh, that and the RC.d scripts don't contain the necessary delay to be intelligent about it. That while you may receive a router advertisement and will within a few seconds have a global unicast address, by the time you end up starting demons which want to bind to that addresses, they are not yet. Uh, out of duplicate address detection and are still uh, blocked. So then stuff done and it becomes most annoying when it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't when you just hit the tip over point of a race condition. And you yeah, can avoid one thing that I've... by just disabling duplicate address detection. Yeah, one thing I've Med... noticed with, uh, um, with jails, if you don't put sync DHCP, it doesn't 
mm -hmm. the the IF config. There's a reason for that. It's an implementation yeah, it details work. which uh, shines through, and that is that the normal DHCP does not block for DHCP. Instead, it waits for def d to run the dh client rc.d script. But mm. since there's only one def ctl device in the whole system, and that's cannot be delegated to jails, so the jail can't run def d, and so it never gets the hot plug event about the link state change. So it never mm. runs the dhcp client asynchronously. And yeah. so yeah, you have to put in sync dhcp if you don't have a usable dev D with a compatible configuration as is the default on a free BSD host, but in a jail, you can't take that shot, but it doesn't save you from uh, IPv6 uh, duplicate address detection uh, troubles. Um, yeah. Okay. That's another interface you put in jails. Oh, just taking notes from the, from okay. the chat here. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to just want research. Because you didn't comment at that is. line. Uh, you put it in as a new line, so it may run into right, trouble when it doesn't find the interface. It's not the. Oh, it's, sorry. It, don't don't worry. It's not the. It's not the main config. It's just my my notes. I have messy home directories. I, I apologize to the universe Fine. for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, not the only so, <laughs> so okay, okay, that's that's uh, that's very all all. Um, yeah, that's, that's so great. for the minutes. What was the punchline? The punchline, I think, was uh, so. This is the um, this is the client side. Can you drop that in the chat? I'm not seeing yep. the labels. And and I'm going to change the the name of the interfaces. So I use insane names of interfaces to uh, server side. Here we go. I'm going to call them each zero. And I'm going to call the, the uh, IP beef cafe. And that's it, I think. Uh, drop them in the dock of the chat. Thank you. Oh, oh beautiful. Ooh, formatted. Nice. Yeah. All right. Prefixes. Okay. Actually, I can stop sharing, I think. I think that's that's it. I'm not going to talk to Jan about uh, my BGP setup, um, which know. was working be beautifully, but but fails over. But maybe that's a different. Maybe that's a different uh, um, uh, uh, week. I'll get it working in a jail, also. so I can use it as an excuse to talk about it. Wait, <laughs> um, which BGP speaker are you using, Bert, Quagga? I Quagga? use Open. I use uh, the 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 um, OpenBSD one. I love it. Nice. I think it's great. It's super clear, uh, uh, works wonderfully, great debug. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. If it covers your use case, it's great. And they, uh, four years or so ago, we finally fixed the uh, painful performance problems for bigger rule sets. So now it's even usable again for, um, internet exchange deployments where you need giant filter tables. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not in so, any of those situations. I just have, you know, I use, uh, just advertise my own on the DC. So so, um, so do, I have the easiest possible setup. I don't you have to- you get a, a default road or a full table? I don't get the full table. I just get default. Um, uh, then you don't have any problems you get to Take whatever you like because uh, exactly which which means that, a handful which means of that, rats. right which means that bird and the other ones are just overkill like i don't uh, want to configure 800 lines to say give me an advertisement please and thank you so you don't have to do that for bird it's not that hard really oh is annoying I, bird is i i promised i wouldn't, I, wouldn't <clears throat> I promised i wasn't going to bring up this topic so i'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> it would be good to hear right? notes sometime. Um, yeah, it sounds like D uh, Dave, you've got some topics, and I'm bl I believe this is the one you're referring to. I found in Fresh Ports the Open BGPD. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so cool. Daniel, for, for um for a while, the Open BGPD one didn't have um the bits to change the routing table in the kernel. Does it do that now, or do you have to have that? 
Yeah, have I think manually. I think there was a recent uh, a recent uh, fix by Clara Systems actually. Um, they got it because, oh, yeah. of course, it worked in it worked in OpenBSD. They fixed mm -hmm. it for FreeBSD. Um, oh, nice. what is, for a yeah. while, it was uh, stuck on an ancient version of uh, OpenBGPD, and now we still have the. I think it was on an what was it five something. I see there's still a port stuck at five dot two. There's another stuck at six nine, and then there's one which claims to be seven dot nine. That must be a Open BGPT internal version number because Open BSD is not yet up to eight dot four, which is the last one. So it looks like different versions of Open BGPD uh, got ported, and then the old port was left in in case someone needs it, and there are regressions or whatever. Hmm. Um, which yeah, I, I'd I'd love to compare some notes offline about um the Bird versus Open BGPD one. Um, yeah, that'd so be good. My, my Bird one is yeah, sure. as well, but it's messy with the the v6 I, at the moment i've got two separate versions i've got a, a v6 one and a v and a v4 one and uh maybe i only need one yeah my yeah. use case is very similar to yours i have other people doing the heavy lifting and i've just got a bunch of applications that go hey i need the things give me the things please uh um, right i have yeah it. i have one one any cast yeah i have one any cast and one you know for the specific data center and I yeah. do, and the, the only, the trouble I'm having now is failing over, but, uh, um, but yeah, but it works, works quite well. Nice. I, I'd really like to have this you going may in jail. Want to, um, uh, point, but... well, what you're describing, when you effectively only get a default route, BGP isn't the best about uh, picking among available paths. So you may want to, feed it into something like IF state D and then uh, pick the default route according to some other metric, maybe even split it up or whatever. Yeah, um, or dev, a dev D. Do some, some dev kind D of or... robbing routing in a stateful way, uh, which you can do, for example, with PF uh, by having PF. Um, just on a per IP destination IP address, uh, do round robin or something among two paths so that you can effectively do an active, active um, load balancing. Dave, what uh, networks, what chat networks are you on? Are you on IRC or Discord? Yes, I'm, I'm uh, on IRC. Yeah. yeah, okay, great. How does that all relate to OSPF? Or open shortest path first. Is that on top of it? Yeah. Oh, Bob. yeah, you're not using open B well, you're using bird in that case, I think. Okay. <laughs> um, you're not using open um OSPFD on FreeBSD anytime soon because as far as I know, nobody ported it. Hmm. And then it's only an eighty percent implementation of OSPF. For example, it does not support um Point to multipoint, and it does not support uh, virtual links. Got it. So it only supports point to point and multicast capable interfaces. And every uh, area needs a direct connection to the backbone area, which can be a problem if you have uh, overlay networks and so on. Of course, you could argue that in that case, you even need multiple OSPF instances or um, and not a single multi-area deployment or that you should use a different routing protocol altogether, be that ISIS or Babel or whatever, which uh, supports better um, aggregation. Uh, oh, but hey. Speaking of which, Dave, you had some OCI questions. Yeah, um, so this is more, has anyone done it? Yes. Um, so and unfortunately, this topic relies on two things, both called OCI. So. Um, I'm still working on getting the latest versions of FreeBSD, so this is 14 and, and for me also 15 current as well, into the Oracle Cloud so that I can redeploy my own infrastructure, <laughs> which is now getting woefully behind. But that's underway. And one of the things that I have in Oracle Cloud is uh, they also have a container registry. 
And I wondered, has anyone worked on using Doug's new uh, uh, OCI jails with an external publicly hosted registry or not? If I remember correctly, XC, uh, the incomplete uh, jail manager, which uh, wowed everyone at UBSDCon uh, mm -hmm. last year, um, has support for pulling and pushing to uh, OCI uh, distribution repositories. Yeah. Uh, so the next one does there. already, because I, I ported the Docker one to FreeBSD um, and used that quite happily. Um, mm -hmm. I just wondered if anyone has done this yet with external with external registries. I guess not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll report back in a couple of weeks. First, I've mm -hmm. got to get the um the I base. I think he fetched from Docker up. Hop. Yeah. In his demo, uh, and Doug's been getting good about attending. Just missed like the last two, but he can probably answer yeah. that question rather decisively. Yeah. Well, I definitely know he has used it. So I just wonder if anyone else has. Okay, I will hopefully be able to report back in a week or two this is going. Oh. I'm just, I got to the tipping point of saying if I can host, reliably use a public registry, uh, then I will flip my next generation of infrastructure over to using OCI containers. Because um, I've got to redo the build process for them anyway, and if I'm going to do that, I might as well go to the future. So uh, I think you missed that discussion last time over time before that uh, I spoke about different ideas um, on how to uh, distribute basically fix the glaring issue Joker showed with the existing FreeBSD jails tooling that is it's maybe great for a single uh, server use case but what FreeBSD is truly lacking is a good way to uh, deployed to multiple systems, not multiple instances of this angel, but build a jail on one system and deploy it to 10 servers. There mm. basically the existing tooling breaks down or just builds it on every server again and again. In theory, things like pot have an answer there, but it's more or less an afterthought. Uh, Potluck is nice, but specific to one jail manager. And so far, what I came up with was um, to uh, we would have to have some kind of exchange format, which is tied to a specific jail manager. And then if you want to make it extensible in the FreeBSD kind of way, not in we write a big um, standards document first, but just let's implement something, you could um, do it like this, uh, you will have a package for basically each uh, jail image, so basically for a Docker image equivalent, which would mm. uh, just deploy the tarball into a directory and then use the uh, Lua or Shell hook on post install to uh, put some links into uh, subdirectories so that basically the jail managers can then scan or even using a KQ uh, in real-time monitor of that directory for the sim link and then consume it. Yeah, so um, this is similar to what I did um, last year. I put um, entire jails into into a package and that mm -hmm. functionally works. It's just annoyingly slow um, because there's a lot of compression and decompression involved, needless decompression. You can pick which again. compression or not to use. I think you should be able to use LZ4 yeah, compression. Yeah, and you could do it you could do it per package. Um so so that's avoidable to a point. Um but then the files get larger. But um the main thing for this is that works fine if you're already okay with Pudrier and if you can rely on certain locations for your uh yeah yeah so so what happens is your package isn't ZFS aware, it only has tables. So what you end up having is a system where you the doubt that the jail the table containing your jail is downloaded, the pre exec creates the necessary ZFS data set. Nope. Um and then it unpacks the table and then the post exec runs um if if you need something done then. And that wasn't a great solution. Um which is um, why I didn't pursue it further. No, the idea is not to do that per jail start, but do it once per package install or upgrade. Mm. So the idea would be that the jail managers just basically 
noted that the tarball is there or whatever exchange format you use. In theory, you could use a read-only uh, GM use it compressed UFS image or whatever format you want. The latter may, pr may work really well as a read-only format with a lot better performance than tarfs. Um, or some other kind of exchange format, a multi-file torrent for all I care, <laughs> but uh, it would have to be agreed on and it would have to preserve the necessary metadata. So it probably would end up being either a tarball or a UFS file system. Then you would uh, re either in the case of a UFS uh, read-only image, you would uh, restore it into a ZFS uh, data set, which would then get snapshotted and cloned uh, hopefully read only for immutable infrastructure deployments or uh, deed up using ZFS block cloning for uh, a more artisanal setup. Uh, if you want your jets to devolve into pets, um, it really depends on what you want. And different jail managers could because they would only get some links dropped into their basically notification directory, similar to how. Uh, a spool directory for a printer or um, for a mail even used to work with local mail delivery. You would just drop yeah. it in. And then when you have consumed this as a jail manager, you would unlink it. And you could argue if, if you would want to use hard links because then you could basically unlink your link, keep the file open and uh, the reference count has dropped to one new, uh, then uh, delete the original. So that basically once all pre-registered uh, jail managers have consumed the notification uh, that they have imported that image, you could even leave the package there so that package upgrade works, but uh, delete the blob you installed from the package so that you don't keep it around. The downside of that is that you, uh, if you then later install a new jail manager to your system, then it wouldn't be able to reconsume the existing images until you upgrade or reinstall them. But you would get the storage back because basically uh, on the next invocation, you're probably single jail manager you use on any one host could. Uh, import that into whatever representation it prefers. Mm. Um, it, which could be as simple as hard linking the uh, file somewhere and then letting the garbage collection clean up. Mm. The um, thing, thing for me is that the container size is really irrelevant because beside the container I've got like 100 plus gigabytes of database. So in that case, you would just le decide <laughs> that really you keep really an extra care. copy yeah. and the garbage collection is is just a package uninstall and you keep two copies of it, uh, one in a tarball, one in a pre-processed representation, for example, a populated ZFS data set that is then snapshotted. Uh, and then you could instantiate within milliseconds instead of minutes. Hmm. I mean, even uh, that's even our current deploys are really, really quick to make a new jail um, because the template is already there. Is really just uh, it's it's like a second or two. It's really no more than yeah. that. Clone so, and config. I found playing with uh, the shell script I shared earlier on the call. I think before you joined. But yep. um, Michael was good enough to uh, put the link into the uh, minutes that um, this script uses ZFS block cloning to uh, basically run, pipe the whole uh, user land through M3 with SHA-512 hashing, then uh, deduplicate based on co uh, file content hash, and uh, then you basically punch in deduplication using cat uh, which implicitly uses the copy file range system call uh, because yeah. the uh, inner loop of the script uh, is a shell script. It takes a minute uh, because it spawns so many tiny little processes. 
Uh, if you sped that up, you could probably get it down to 10 seconds or so. But um, mm -hmm. copying out, so basically instantiating a template is uh, 1.1 seconds on a cheap SATA SSD system. Uh, the writes generated by it on an otherwise idle uh, pool spread over two seconds are less than 60 megabytes, uh, which is just the uh, metadata. Mm. And so that I can just basically see P-A uh, the template into a, a new data, empty data set and get deduplicated uh, jails like that. And unlike the approach with VFS snapshots and clones, you get to keep your uh, local data in the same data set so that you can rebase them. That's why it's tempting uh, for, for me to mess around with that. Yeah, I guess that's the 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 goal, goal for us has always been to to not have to do that. Like deploys are um, remove everything, redeploy. Exactly. And, when you can do that, that you data. can. But uh... if it's it's that's the it's you get that if you have the luxury of designing your own application stack, which which I do, and not everyone has that. So, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, yeah. just sort of just circle back. The original question was. Um, has anyone used an external registry for OCI? The answer is not yet, um, at least on this call. So I'll, I'll give it a crack and report back. Um, and uh, hopefully Please do uh, and share which so, commands yeah. work, what is already yeah. available. Um, because yeah, The yeah, one in ports already works, and I'll just... Um, which one? I'll, I'll, uh, I, I, I wrote in my notes down, so I'll share it when I'm back. Um, I'm up charging the Thanks. car at the moment, but when I'm back home, I'll share the link. And it's just, there's a Docker registry one in ports, um, and it's... There's not much information on it, but I, I wrote it like a how-to guide, for, including mm -hmm. Doug stuff like um, six six months or so ago, and yeah, it's fine. It's just got no. The thing is, it's got no redundancy, no resiliency, and it's another thing that runs on another piece of infrastructure. And what I've um, found is that at some point, somewhere, I've got to build things from a someone else's infrastructure, FreeBSD, registry, or some external registry. Yeah. But what's the problem with running your own uh, registry? It's essentially stateless and easy to mirror because it's a uh, content address. Um, it, it's just one of those chicken egg things. The, the, the thing I'm working on at the moment is I need to be able to rebuild my own infrastructure without me being there. In fact, someone else needs to be able to rebuild it. This is I can take a holiday, right? Um, mm -hmm. And um, part of this needs to be um, not break into Dave's house and extract the disk from behind the router from the network yeah. cut from the network cable <laughs> like back home to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. So that's so the rad. that's the reason for using a public registry. If I have a public registry, um then we could kind of rely on that. Uh, yeah. Does that link look correct for Dr. Dash registry? What uh, commands are you Before? using yeah, to uh, to interface with your own uh, registry? Do you just drop them into the local file system and hope or uh, are there no Docker, is... Docker registry has its own little API? We've got to put, put oh, things okay, in so it. yeah, and it has an um, API. I've got notes for that. Yeah, I've got notes for that, and I'll I'll add them to the doc just below. Oh, the so just created. mess around with that, yeah, because the the existing, yeah, my main thing always with the Docker stuff is they, they love to move fast and break things, and that's not how I like my infrastructure, um, yes. They so do, while the tour, they are quite... work today, um, I, I, I don't want to test it in six months' time and find out that um, everything's broken. Yeah. Yep. At least they're slower about breaking the uh, specified uh, interfaces as in protocols. They're quite eager to break the implementation. But the, uh, for example, the OCI image format and so on hasn't changed uh, significant in a long time. Did you want to geek out on BGP or save it for another day? Well, let's just geek out on BGP if you want. Then, uh... I might need to step away, but I can leave it recording. And... Yeah, I actually, I just... I unfortunately, have to. Yeah, I have to bounce. I've got to pick up my kid from school. Okay. Um, yeah, me too. Cool, sure. but I'll, I'll message I'll message you on IRC and we'll uh, yep. and we'll, cool. We'll Thanks, I'm I'm Okay, yeah. Do share sure your then. findings when you have them. Okay. Yeah. And have and a great week. You can do crazy stuff with that. For example, you can use Bird to 
find all your uh, IPA interfaces on the host and then redistribute them into OSPF or BGP so that you can have uh, dynamically routed uh, jail networks. So you would do something like uh, just match a pattern, have an import filter, and then everything on these interfaces, and then the right filter connecting the kernel and direct protocols to the uh, dynamic routing protocol of your choice, be that your IGP or BGP as IGP. Uh, and I prototyped that a few years ago, and but uh, just like Dave, the problem is that it started out with a bus factor of less than one. Because when I, when I was done, I had already forgotten some parts <laughs> of a prototype, and it has too many moving pieces, and you have to know so many different basically topics of you have to be familiar, comfortable with dynamic routing and ZFS and jails and FreeBSD and general and so on, and then yeah, cool. Thanks. Okay, thank you everyone. Like and subscribe seems to be the phrase. And Michael, I just need the link to the uh, the doc through my registry notes. Oh, let me drop that in. Actually, they'll get updated. Give me a moment right, to save the chat. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks very much. Cheers. See you later. Bye. Take care.